So have you ever sold some cryptocurrency or just converted it from one crypto to another? You're going to get taxed on that. So this is a massively requested video. I feel that in the UK especially and also in Europe, a lot of people have no idea what to do. This video will mainly focus on the UK, but if you are in other countries, I'm going to explain how I do it and you can look at your local tax law. So it will be very, very useful to show you my methodology and what systems and platforms that I use to do this. I am not a professional, obviously, but I will be using a lot of government structure and as well as guides on authentic websites to showcase what you can do in other other countries. This is massively important. It's down to you to get the information correct so you can do your assessment properly. Please like the video. This needs to get some legs. So if you can do one thing today, please like it. It's down to you guys to check what countries you are in for obvious reasons in terms of tax laws. In the UK, there's a lot of warnings coming out. There's a lot of FCA warnings about exchanges, but also HMRC making voluntary disclosures of unpaid tax. This is new, as you can see, last updated 15th of January. Basically, you can report back four years worth of gains, returns, or even whatever losses, right? However, there's a lot of people, certainly people that, you know, have been in the space for a long time who have had massive, massive wins. I've actually never paid a penny on tax. HMRC are looking for those type of people, and it makes sense. This, to me, feels like a bit of an amnesty to go, right, get it in. We won't go after you in the future. In the future, they will go after you. They will be putting high, high interest rates on your fees, on your fines, essentially. Oh, it'd be horrible. So be careful. So it's all here. Tells you what to do. But we'll go into more detail in a second. Another link that we need to look at is reminders now are appearing for cryptocurrency asset users. Reminding that if you are a cryptocurrency investor or staker or whatever, selling and doing all this kind of malarkey, you need to do a self-assessment. You need to do it. And this is what this video is all about. But let's get into some more nitty gritty stuff in terms of how do you do it. So firstly, I use Coinly. There is other software available. There is a link below. You get a little discount as well, which is pretty awesome. I've been using these for a while. I used a one called Coin Tracker back in the early days, but I prefer this. There is also a one called Crypto Tax Calculator. Very, very similar. So how do they work? Ash, you're probably wondering. Basically, you put in your exchanges, you put in your wallets, and you will get a load of API keys essentially to figure out your available balances from buying and selling and all that kind of stuff. And it basically acts as a free portfolio checker. You do have to pay for it in terms of getting tax reports. Those tax reports are sequenced in such a way that you can basically see on the whatever website or portal that you need to do for your country, which I will come on to in a second, you will be able to just fill in the information. It will do it all for you. We will come into the nits and gritties bits in a bit. Now, as you can see on the screen here, every tax calculator reporter has an up-to-date version of your country. 20 plus countries are available here. That is important. So if you are in America, if you're in France, if you're in Canada, Germany, UK, whatever, you can find all the information. This is why it's crucially important. Even though I'm in the UK and it's mainly for UK users, you can do the exact same thing. Take parts from this video and understand the elements of profit, sell, how to do your tax reports and use a tool like this. You will be okay. Absolutely fine. However, countries are different. Certain countries in Europe have very odd laws that you don't get taxed over a certain period of time, or if you hold it for long enough, you don't get taxed, which is great. Some have no tax at all, certain countries, uh, Portugal. And there's other ones that are much more aggressive on tax as well, where they actually tax losses. So yeah, a bit crazy, I know, but you need to do that research yourself. So back onto Coinly here. When you go onto resources and tax guides, this is where you will get all your information, right? Basically, all I've done is I've gone to the hashtag Germany, for example, right? You can see here, tax guide Germany is here, which is pretty awesome, right? So you can click onto that and it will give you a full information guide. This is an up-to-date version of the, the German one, right? If I go onto the UK version, there's a one here for Accountants UK Crypto Guide. I will come onto Accountants in a bit. But it has all the information and also frequently asked questions. How does crypto trigger a capital gains event? For example, the information here is huge. And I've got some massive pointers and notes that what I do, which will massively help you here in terms of understanding your own wallet as well, which is hugely important. But it'll tell you all the information that you need. There's a lot of information and I know it's brain overload, but literally if you go to the resources, go to tax guides, it looks like this, right? You can go Canada, Brazil, UK. So if I go to UK, for example, harvesting tax losses, that's a hugely important thing. Is crypto a capital loss in the UK? There's so many different things as well as like 
you know, how to do it based in simple terms, how to do it and what it actually is. So in terms of how much rate of pay, this is a this is a really common question. Your capital gains in the UK is either 10 or 20 percent. So basically, if you don't earn much money, 10 percent or if you're retired, you don't have an income, whatever, 10 percent like me, 20 percent. Right. Fair enough. However, it's all a separate pot, right? So you've got your income and then you've got your capital gains. I will show you how Coinly works for income if you are staking. So don't skip a part just yet. But as you can see here, you get an allowance every year. Now, this is for UK only people. It's been halved. Last year or the year before that and the year before that, it was £12,000 you can have tax free. Right. So say, for example, you made twenty thousand dollars profit, twenty thousand pounds profit, whatever currency you want to go for. You'll only be taxed on eight thousand pounds of that. Twelve thousand will be tax free. Eight thousand, you get twenty percent off that. Right. Now it's six thousand for this year. The following year, it's going to be three. So it kind of sucks, which is going back to my previous video why I sold. I've got a higher tax thing. I might as well use it. Hmm. But you get the idea. Other factors as well here, hugely important that you understand this in the UK. Income, staking rewards, airdrops, forks, stuff like that, hugely important. Coinly and other tax um, software platforms will record that and show that for you. So stuff like this is hugely important. Obviously, you can see here as income, obviously mining as well. Not many people will be mining though. So keep it simple. Please keep it simple. You've got all kinds of elements. One big perk for reporting your taxes is you can offset fees and losses. For four years, you can do your losses. So for example, right, me, a couple of years ago, had a couple of bad ones. When I would report those at the same time, great, winner, winner, chicken dinner. It would offset my future profit. So even now, if I've got a loss, I could put that in and then it would offset it as a loss for the future years, if that makes sense. So it majorly helps, as well as the fees. Trading fees are a huge factor. You could offset them as well. So if you're in the UK, you need to set yourself up to do a self-assessment. You will get a UTR number, basically a unique taxpayer reference number, right? And this will bolt onto your national insurance number or whatever details you get in whatever country you're in that will allow you to do a self-assessment, right? Simple as that. Now, there's going to be an obvious question. What do I do if I've not got an accountant? We're going to come to that in a bit and other things too. Now, when you do this, you will... This is what I do personally, right? I have my income, right? I have a company. I get pays you earn from there. I have income from obviously Patreon, from YouTube and other bits and pieces as well as other bits and pieces what, you know, come in through like um, X rewards, whatever, right? Now, with that in mind, I keep all my income and I report it. I report that every tax year. Now, the income part for crypto is also on Coinly. So when I go into Coinly, it will tell me income from staking rewards, from any affiliates, any airdrops that I might have got, which is very, very rare. But it will give me an income bracket and then I will put that income on top of what my income is. So it's all one big collective. This is where it differs a little bit for other people. With the world of tax, it is the opposite way around in terms of when we're doing tax reporting for this financial year, which is basically April to, well, April to April, essentially. So 2023, 2024, it's ending and rolling over in about, what, two weeks time. Now, with that in mind, you will have to report that by January 2025, right, for this year. So anything after April the 6th in the UK is not taxed. It's fine. It's already done. So you've got quite a lot of time. That's where it's key. This is where Coinly comes in. So you can get all your stuff up to, up to date in terms of your personal income, your income from crypto. You can put it all in. You can save it as a draft. This is what I do. And then later on, I will add my capital gains when I've done all the faffing about and verifying on Coinly because this is where you need to really listen because this is important. This is Coinly, right? This is the learning crypto one. There's nothing in here that's not very up to date. This is one of our Coinbase accounts and it doesn't give you the full information, right? Which is kind of annoying. Only because we've not done it. Realize gains there. Normally, there'll be a bracket that'll say income as well as trading fees and other bits and pieces, right? So this allows you to go back in time and look at certain things. Now, this is our financial years as a company, right? Kind of obvious. Now, with that being said, we've got time to do the report. So obviously, from this period, right, we've got that time. And then the following year, it will be done in January 2026, basically, or whatever it will be you know, work out as it's a weird kind of one with the companies. Anyways, moving on. I have time then to get my shit in order, right? Why? 
Transactions on Coinly will be at some point wrong. Just saying. So it's up to you to go through your transactions and remove any odd duplicates. You will see very, very clearly, you will have a holdings tab here, which is basically your portfolio. That has to marry up. Kind of obvious. You will get little alerts here that will tell you some of the things are wrong. Sometimes when it's a difference of like that, it doesn't really matter. However, there is some on here that are actually difference quite wrong. Obviously 16 on there for that one, 47. We've got to go and basically find them. Long as your balance so is correct and everything kind of marries up with your portfolio and it's true to the fact and you can actually report that and record that, that is fine. But some people will look at that and go, oh my God, what's wrong here? Sometimes you will find a discrepancy of like, you'll have double in your portfolio. You're actually paying double the amount of tax you need to pay for or you may underpay tax, right? So you've got to make sure that that is correct, right? So with that in mind, it's huge. In terms of editing it, it's very, very simple. If you just go on to say, you know, search on whatever, I don't know, let's just search for the BTC one. Oh, it's not even on there, sorry. Uh, polka dot, there we go. So the polka dot one's here. You can click on it and you can see, you know, is it correct or not, if it all marries up. Usually it does, usually nine times out of 10. But when you start going around with the wallet and the integrations and you start looking at different, you know, if you've got Ledger linked up with your wallet and it's duplicate, be careful. That's one thing I will say. If you're using a ledger, just use ledger. However, some people do ledger and then they do the individual wallets like a Bitcoin wallet or Ethereum wallet and it's like it's double. The double ones will blow your brain. It's like, oh, I've broken it. And it gets very, very messy very, very quickly when you've got staking rewards and income and all kinds of stuff like that. It gets really, really daunting. So when it comes down to getting tax reports, you go to the tax report section. It will give you a inclusive kind of look of what it is. This is kind of not perfect right now, but this is giving you an idea of what other things you will see on your homepage when it starts to get filled. Now, you need to go onto here and you need to then get your, whenever you do a tax report, it's all the same. You need to get a paid plan though, right? Depending on how many kind of, I'll show you, it's easier. Depending on how many transactions you've got, you got this. Simple as that, right? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So if we're under hundred transactions, it'll only be $39 or 39 pounds, sorry, in this case. Fundamentals, simple. More transactions, the more beefy it's going to be. But these reports are exactly how your tax country will want them and for you to lay it out in terms of a screen when you're doing your t tax and self-assessment, which is very, very easy to do, which is saving a lot of the hard work. So on to the frequently asked questions. What if your asset is not included? That's where the problem lies. So what I do, I make a note of what I did in manual terms. So for example, the rows ecosystem for me is a great example for this. If I put in rows, it's only that. It's only emerald, right? Not sapphire, won't work. But this is where the delay comes in, which is huge. I've got time. I can get my everything up to date and perfect. And then I can wait a couple of months for that to go live and then for me to do it at a later date. I've got until January to fully submit my tax report. I get a rough idea of what my tax is going to be in terms of income and I'll know roughly what it's going to be. That's fine. But I can wait for future developments. What you need to do is you go into Coinly, right? If you go to the bottom and you press updates here, you'll see this. All the requests and feedback shows what's completed and it will show what's in progress. I'm pretty sure Rose is on its way, actually. If I go onto here... There we go, Oasis Network in progress right now. So I'm personally waiting for that. So when that happens, cool, when I win a chicken dinner, it will report it all for me. If you are using other shit coins or meme coins, whatever it may be, you may well find the exact same situation where you're looking at exchanges of water services that are no longer there or not there at all, and you can't do things, right? It's a pain in the ass. So when you are actually hooking these up, it's all APIs or wallet addresses. It's very, very straightforward. But as I say, I personally would just wait. If you can't do it, you just got to do it as a separate capital gain. So if you can work out, you know, on the exchanges in terms of how much you bought something for and what you sold it for, that will tell you what the profit and loss would be. Anyways, most exchanges have that exchanges, right? But if you've got it in a wallet and it doesn't, it's not recognized, you've just got to do it as a manual thing. It's a pain in the ass, I know. But it is quite easy. So if, say, for example, if you did like a public sale or a pre-sale, whatever it may be, and you put in, say, X amount of dollars, say $1,000, and you sold 20% of that, you can work out the profit of that probably pretty easily, and you can just add it on top of what you're doing. Another frequently asked question that we tend to get is, do you need an accountant? Now, personally, I say no. For me, personally, your accountant is not going to have a scooby-doo. If you want to get an accountant to double-check your input and output is correct on the self-assessment to make sure it's all correct, that's fine. 
don't get them to handle this though, because that's you. You are fully responsible for making sure that this is 100% correct in terms of your balances and it is up to date. Yes, there will be little discrepancies. It doesn't matter if there's a couple of little bits here, a couple of pennies here and there. It doesn't matter. That's fine. But if you are knowingly being very, very incompetent with your tax reporting and you're just not giving a shit and HMRC can see that, I'm going to talk about that in a second because I think that's important. But if this is correct, it's fine. It is actually very, very easy. There's a lot of guides on YouTube in terms of how to do a self-assessment for capital gains, like walkthroughs. There's a lot of good accounts. It is actually, when you get the report, you can see the three, four columns that you need to input onto it and what it is. It is genuinely very, very easy. So you're going to save yourself a lot of money by not getting an accountant. But as I say, you can go on YouTube, you can see you also have time. I would give you this advice. Don't wait until January to do it. Do it literally from April onwards. If you've got tax reporting from this financial year, from April beyond whatever, just do it straight away. Get it up to date. Get familiar with the platform. Get familiar with like how HMRC works or your country's platform for how you do reports and understand it and then make sure it's correct so you're not flapping and rushing because over time you may need to get extra support. You might wait for more data to come through or better services on Coinly to appear, which makes it better and faster. So that's hugely important, right? But this is where I'm going to kind of break your balls a little bit. Remember me going on about this, HMRC. HMRC know that you're in crypto via the exchanges, essentially, right? So this is why these warnings are huge. This is why you need to report your tax as correct as possible, right? Yeah, there's some discrepancies where you may have a bit of a boo-boo and it, yeah, shit happens. But if you correct that, that's fine. But if you're knowingly avoiding it, that's where the problem lies. Cryptocurrency debit cards are handled by FCA companies. Basically, the companies that give you the card, it's all reported on a ledger and that goes to HMRC. Coinbase users, Kraken users, all these ones with FCA sub-licenses, now certainly in the UK, are reporting to HMRC. So they know. They know. There's 80,000 people that received letters in the last two years saying that they know that they owe tax for HMRC. That's baffling. So please don't fall into that. Please. In all fairness, it's down to you. If you want to pay tax, pay tax. If you don't, don't. It's up to you. Problem is, people will look at this as a big, massive screaming wake-up call, but the reality is, as much as it is decentralization, you are actively investing. You are an investor. You are trying to buy low, sell high, and make a profit. That's fine. Tax laws in the UK, personally, are quite good. Some countries are not that good, and I understand why people would not want to pay tax, but this is a caveat to all of this. It's up to you. If you take profit, certainly for the UK, you don't pay tax, do you? If you do not take profit, you have all the cards. If you've bought Bitcoin years ago and you're not looking to sell for a really long time, you don't have to worry about this. It's fine. But if you're shitcoining, moon, moon, moving stuff around, that's a problem. People don't understand the first line of this video. If you've bought or sold any crypto or transaction, any transactions in crypto, you will be taxed on it. People don't get that. So the biggest caveat to this is it's not what goes into your bank now. It's if you do a transaction, if you've gone from Tether into XRP and XRP is made 3X and you move that XRP back into Tether, that is a taxable event, even though it's not gone into your account. However, this is where it gets really scary is the fact that you can go from XRP into something like, I don't know, Metis, for example, and Metis does like a nuke and it dies on you. You've lost all your capital gains, and even though you've not reported that, you could actually owe HMRC some money from those gains, but you don't have the money for it. Okay, you've got to be very, very careful with that one too. So there we go. Apologies for the numb lesson, but I'm hoping this gives you an idea of what to kind of do and where to go and what to look at. Links are below, certainly if you're in the UK, and if you want Coinly, all the guides are on there. Just be as quick as you possibly can in getting it over the line so you are familiar with it and that your information is correct because it will genuinely take you about a month to get everything right on Coinly. It is an absolute pain in the ass. It really is. If you are a non-risky investor and using like a Coinbase or big platform, it's actually quite easy. If you're like me and it's like on public sales and you're going on all these weird and obscure exchanges, you've got so many accounts, it's a pain in the ass. I'm not lying. It takes a long, long time. But... Please do watch this next video that's appearing and like this video. I want to get this as far and wide as possible. 
2,000 likes would be amazing. Tax is a massive problem and we need to kind of get people educated before people get fined hard.